Hello viewers, it's SuperGT here. Welcome to Forza Bowling Simulator 6. And you can probably guess what's going to happen as we approach the first corner around Spa. Yes, these two guys are going to get wiped out, just like bowling. There we go, straight into the lead. That's kind of helped me, if I'm honest, but I'd rather they weren't taken out quite like that. We go downhill with the ridiculous puddles. We have to go through the puddle that covers the entire track. This stupid one at the bottom of Eau Rouge. And then we've got these puddles halfway up as well. Some of these puddles are gravity defying around this circuit. They don't seem to drain away at all down that massive hill. Up the straight, you can see that this car has got amazing power. What is the car? You're probably wondering. It is a bit of a beast. Look at it. It's just, it's just, well, it's not even a car really. It's more like an aircraft carrier. It's actually the Chrysler 300. The tune is by O-N-R-T-N -N Eagle. I'll put his name in the description below. Um, and actually, this car is actually really quite good. As you can see here, I'm actually going to win a race for once. Pushed all the way by Silent Saint to the finish. So it wasn't an easy race by any means, but it was a victory nevertheless. We move then to Silverstone Grand Prix circuit for the second race of the video. I qualified third on the grid into the first corner, almost got into this guy's Trans Am, just about keeping position though, through the turn, uh, second turn, and into the first of the sharp corners. I like to qualify this one as the first corner because it's the first one where actual stuff happens usually, or bad stuff. And the Honda S2000 has gone, around, uh, gone around my outside, I'm just going to let him in there, not really any room for me to go too abreast through this left kink onto the middle straight. We can test out the car's power down this straight, leaving the Corvette behind. That's Silent Sate once again, who pushed us all the way in the previous race. Into the left, almost going to the back of that guy, lock up a little bit. Then Silent Sate is just going to appear on my left hand side there, but he isn't quite going to be able to get past. He does give me a bit of a tap here though. You can see there just a slight tap on the exit of the corner. We're going to lose a little bit of time. But they're going into the Maggots and Beckett section. You can see here, this car actually handles really quite nicely through this section. This last part though, I always seem to get it wrong. I always turn in way too late for that one. So that wasn't really more of the car. That was more the driver error for that last apex. Into the last couple of corners. Going down to the first gear that unsettled the car. And I was actually struggling through this complex throughout the entire race. I think the only main downside of this car is seemed to turn in quite slowly at high speeds. Which I guess is quite bad for this track because it is a high speed track. With lots of high speed direction changes. And it kind of contradicts what I just said around the Maggots Beckett section. It seemed to be really good through there. I just couldn't get it to turn in through that last uh, corner. Silent State almost coming back at me there. But then as we go into the last corner once again... You can see this time uh, shifting down into first momentarily but back up into second very quickly and is this last apex just turning in way too late perhaps it's just driver error once again but then over the line to start the final lap of three we are retaining fourth place which isn't bad coming through the first corner uh, and second corner if this second corner you can carry a lot of speed through it's actually not a very tight corner at all getting back over to the left hand side for your braking point into the 90 degree right and then we have the 180 degree hairpin. I wasn't trouble through there. But coming up to the end of the race, you can see the guy had just made a couple of mistakes. I did manage to reel him in slightly, but he probably wasn't going to be troubled into this last corner unless I didn't break and smashed him off. But, you know, I'm not that kind of guy. Well, at least I hope I'm not. And through the last corner, just hoping that he doesn't go for a lunge up the inside, and he doesn't. I actually hit the apex that time for once. One out of three, that's better than none out of three, I guess. Over the line we go, finishing fourth, not too bad, I did start third, so I did lose a position. Those are the results, two Hondas finishing out front, as you might expect. But this race here, around Lime Rock, wow, what a race this was. Off the line we go, I'm just going to block the inside so he can't cut my inside. I want to keep that inside line through the first corner. The Audi is going to give me room, but then he's going to go very wide and give me even more room. So I'm through into third. I'm going to move across here, just behind the Lotus, to cover him off. Audi can't do anything about that. Looking up the inside of the Lotus. Not quite there though. Then into the right hander. Just following the Lotus through. We've got two very fast handling cars ahead of us. We've got the Honda S2000 
and the Lotus. So I'll do a good job if I can keep up with these two guys around this kind of track. A very handling based track in this aircraft carrier. Absolute beast of a car. Probably weighs about the, the same weight of about 89 elephants or something. Maybe, maybe less. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much an elephant weighs to be honest. Maybe 8 tons is it? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. Back onto the race. It's uh, well, it's queuing up behind me here. I've made a couple of mistakes through that chicane whilst thinking about the weight of elephants, and that's actually put me on the back foot here. As we enter the first corner, just going to hold a nice tight line. The guy behind really can't do anything about that. This car pretty much is about half the width of the track, so he's going to do well to get past me here. But then coming into the third turn, he goes actually into a very nice move. I do have to back out slightly. He's through there. Was, there was contact. I think that was a decent move overall. Not too bad at all. Into the next turn. Almost going into the back of him. Almost ploughing him off, off the track. Going up the hill. Grazing the tyre barrier. Which isn't a tyre barrier. It was just the barrier. Then into, into the chicane. Breaking a lot earlier that time. And well. Liberally using part of the kerb. Shall we say. Into the final corner. This is the end of lap number two. That's 33% of the race done. Two minutes in. We've got four minutes here roughly to try and regain third place. Let's see if we can do that. Coming into the first corner. Nailing our breaking point there. We like to hug the inside line there. Coming back for a late apex. Where that tyre wall is there on the second apex. That is pretty much your apex. So coming through turn number two. And then into three. Keep it onto the left hand side. Use the two wheels on the right hand side on the kerb on the inside and that is a good line through there you can see the guy ahead just pulling away he's opening the gap as we come up the uphill right hander the car goes very light through here as you can see every lap I'm going slightly wide the car didn't quite like that a gravity defying corner so the guy ahead's just gonna cut that one by well by quite a bit actually but it looked like I gained if anything somehow so coming through the final corner the car so rooted through there. A lot of cars have trouble going through that corner. Seeming to want to oversteer or understeer or both. And this one just doesn't really do that. I think the the weight of the car does actually help in many ways. If you can overcome the heavy weight with a lot of power. Then it actually helps in many ways with the handling. Because it just gets rid of the oversteer a lot of the time. But yes it does give you understeer. But... This actually is a decent um, way of going about the racing in this game. Having these heavy cars seems to work. This guy is just going to go wide. As I was just mentioning though, the Cadillac CTSV that I like to use, in the same kind of boat as this one, both very heavy cars, or boats if you like, um, but, they, but they seem to get the job done with a lot of power and decent handling. This one handles actually quite nicely. Again, the tune is by ONR TN Eagle, which is in the description below. Into the last corner, now we are actually slowly gaining on the guy ahead who was in the Lotus if I remember correctly. But we do have a job on our hands both forwards and backwards here because the guy I just overtook on the previous lap is not going to give up that easily. He did make a mistake but he is going to want his third place back. But I'm going to not worry about that too much, I'm just going to stick to trying to lap as quickly as I can. Taking a light apex, getting over to the left-hand side, as I mentioned, and then onto the inside. The guy ahead, just grazing two wheels onto the grass. Whenever you see that, that always um, that always gets you going a little bit because you know that you're going to gain slightly by doing that. Again, I saw some tyre smoke, so he is losing time all the time here, the guy ahead, and he's looking ever so much closer as we go into the chicane for the fifth time. He's actually having to resort to going over the grass completely, and once again, we've gained despite trying to stick to the track a little bit more than the guy ahead. So through the final corner, we have one more lap to navigate off the Lime Rock circuit. Over the line we go, and look at that, we've reeled him in massively here. But it's going to be a massive job to try and get past him with a car that is as wide as the track. In my car, that is not his one. His one is probably about as wide as, well, the kerb, maybe. So into turn two, late apex... He's gone a lot more shallow into the third turn. But he can get away with it in that kind of car because it handles so well. Now coming up into the right hand. I do love this corner because the 
the uphill nature of it kind of compresses the car down. You can go through that one quite quickly. Just almost getting a, no a nice wall tap on the exit. Ken Block would be proud. And then into the chicane, coming on to a nice a early apex on the first apex. And then it gives you a good drive on the exit. Coming through the final turn, this is going to be very close because I know that I've got the power down the straight. Can I get the job done? It's going to be a drag race to the line. Is he going to come and chop me off? No, he's not. And I'm just going to get second place in what was a very consistent last couple of laps there. Very pleased with that. This car, on, on the whole, is actually very, very good. Very pleased with it. There are the results. Honda S2000 winning by quite a long way. So there we have it. The crazy NY cab taxi. The Chrysler 300. It turned out to be quite a crazy car to pick. But it really is a good car for A-Class. So I'd recommend actually giving that car a go. But that is the end of this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. And hit the like button if you did like this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.